As I said in 1995, the first observational evidence, and that was another research, came about. So decades went by before, from Ekman's work in the early 1900s to the 1990s where we had the technology to actually measure this. And Tommy wrote a really nice spotlight in the book about this, comparing it to tennis, but really theoretical observations or theoretical information, theoretical models for this mean transport were available for a long time before we were ever out actually able to observe it. So it took a long time for observations to check up, catch up with the theory in this case. And this is an image that Tommy Dickey got, I believe this was in 2003, and this is from the Bermuda test bed mooring. It is a moored set of instruments. So there's a float at the surface, a cable that runs all the way down to the seafloor, and on that are several different instrument packages. If you look up Bermuda test bed mooring in the book, there's a nice image of it in one of the chapters. And this is our, some data from that. At each depth was a current meter. So each depth shown here, 30, 48, 66, on down to 192 meters were current meters. There were also temperature sensors. The colors in here refer to the temperature. The directions here refer to actually the, the whirls here are just like the vectors we saw previously. So these whirls refer to water directions at each one of these depths. Up top here, we have some measure of barometric pressure. And here you can see it dropped precipitously on this day right here, which I believe is Julian Day 252, or excuse me, it must be Julian Day 249, excuse me. Pressure dropped precipitously. Wind speeds went up tremendously. What do you think that was from? A hurricane. So a hurricane went nearby the mooring, and right at this point is where you see, here the currents are maybe reversing a little bit. This is possibly due to some tidal influence. And then we get this severe change in current directions. Here the water goes from warm to cooler. So we see some upwelling happening. Here you can see that this wind mixing is also mixing heat down to nearly 100 meters in the water column. But you can see that the large spirals, the changing in directions, and the changing directions, and that propagates down through, and these currents are moving slower, as well as changing directions. And if you could follow this down carefully, you would see that it looks just like the Ekman spiral image that we had looked at previously. So this is one of the most elegant and probably the best ever observational evidence of an Ekman spiral. And again, it wasn't until 2003 that we actually were, it had the uh, availability of technology to actually measure an Ekman spiral in the ocean. So props to Tommy Dickey. That's why he's become such a famous oceanographer for doing this type of work. And our hat's off to him.